Okay, so this video is about some basic conceptual ideas about the GCS. I'm not going to talk in detail about how you assess it um, or the clinical relevance of it. But I'm just going to go through some of the basic ideas. Uh, and there's many ways that we can think about the GCS. We can think about it as a, pro a prognostic tool. We can think about it um, as a tool that we can use to look for trends in a patient's conscious level. Um, but another way of thinking about it is in helping us to work out roughly where the lesion is, um, going from the cerebral cortex all the way down to the brainstem. So if we draw um, you know, a rough outline of the whole CNS, okay, well basically we can think about lesions um, affecting the cortex, affecting more subcortical structures and then affecting the brain stem to greater or lesser degrees. Uh, and I'll just emphasize that as we go through this. So let's take eye opening for example. To get the highest score uh, with regard to eye opening you need to be doing it spontaneously. So you've got your eyes open, you're looking around, you're, you're fully awake. Okay, And if you're going to do spontaneous behaviour you need an intact cerebral cortex. So the cerebral cortex allows you to do spontaneous purposeful behaviour like opening your eyes. Now if you get a three for eye opening, that means you're only opening your eyes in response to speech. So this you could think of as somebody maybe who's, who's asleep, um, who's sleepy, who's got their eyes closed, they're, they're um, a little bit um, drowsy. So in that case there would be a lower level of cortical activation. So you might have had a, a bang on the head and that might have decreased the level of cortical activation slightly such that you have to provide an extra input to get the cortex activated to make the eyes open. Then you think we've got eye response in eye opening in response to pain and that only gives you a two. And eye opening in response to pain is a more of a a subcortical reflex activity. So this could be the case where there is quite severe damage to the cortex, but there is reflex activity um, in the subcortical and brainstem levels where a painful stimulus comes in through the trigeminal nerve and reflexly causes the facial nerve to activate uh, the muscles that open the eyelids. So there's a reflex response here, and that's what gives you a two. And then the worst response is a one, and you can imagine in that case, that could be caused by really severe brainstem damage, um, whereby the motor nuclei that would normally open the eyelids are, are completely destroyed and the patient doesn't open their eyes at all. So that's the way I think about eye opening. Let's think about motor response next. So to get the maximum of a six for motor response, you do what the doctor asks you to do, okay? You follow commands, you obey commands. And if you think about this, what does it require? Well, it requires you to process incoming auditory information, to think about that and understand what's being asked, and then to produce a relevant response. So in order to obey a command, the whole pathway from brainstem through to cortex and back down to brainstem needs to be intact to give you a six. Um, the next level down to give us a five is where the patient localizes um, to a, a stimulus, okay? Um, and in this case, that they might not be fully awake, they might not appear to be fully awake, but they're able to bring their hand up to a part of the body where you, which you stimulate, okay? And if you think about this, this still requires um, a certain component of cortical activity, um, but not quite as sophisticated as in obeying verbal commands, all right? So that suggests that the cortex has been damaged to a certain extent, um, meaning that we can't obey verbal commands, but we can still localise to a, a given stimulus. Now, to get a four for motor response, you have to just withdraw from a painful stimulus. And here the doctor is stimulating the patient's finger with a pencil. So this is a withdrawal response um, to a, a painful stimulus. And if you think about this, a withdrawal response is, is a physiological response, but this is a spinal reflex or a brainstem mediated reflex. So we don't really need the cortex to give us a four in the GCS, we can actually manage that with the brainstem and the spinal cord. So of course that's a lower score 
um, and that, that's a worse score in this case because it suggests that we've got more cortical injury. To get a three, we get a flexor response to pain, okay? And as you can see, flexion to pain, um, that is physiological. You tend to pull away from it, but it's not a complex withdrawal response. And a flexion response to pain is typical of uh, what's called a decorticate lesion, meaning the lesion is above the level of the red nuclei. Okay, so the lesion's up here somewhere above the red nuclei. Whereas if you extend to pain, this is suggestive of what's called a decerebrate lesion, which is below the level of the red nuclei in the brainstem. And of course, this is much, much worse. Okay to have an extensor response to pain, which is completely unphysiological, completely unadaptive, and that's suggestive of a lesion below the level of the red nuclei. And to get a one, we get no response, which is suggesting that all, you know, much of this has been so severely damaged that we can't even get um, a spinal reflex effectively. Um, and then verbal responses, well, we've, we've got the same rationale here. To get a five for the verbal response, um, you're giving an appropriate answer to a question such as what's the year, okay? Which suggests that the cortex is working well, absolutely fine. To get a four, that would be maybe the wrong answer to what's the year, okay? Um, and that suggests that, you know, the cortex is working well enough to understand the question. It knows that you're being asked what year it is, but it's not working well enough to get the question right. So hence we get four. Um, Inappropriate words gives us a three, all right? Once again, a, a further degree of cortical damage, but still we're getting a verbal response. Incomprehensible sounds gives us a two. Now, these sorts of sounds are mediated by more subcortical and brain stem centers. So we could have quite a severe cortical injury, but still be able to make moaning and groaning sounds, which are mediated by these more subcortical structures. And then, of course, no response gives us a 1, meaning that the brainstem damage may be so bad that um, we're not even able to activate the muscles that cause phonation. Now, you've got to always think of caveats when assessing the GCS. For example, if a patient's had a very severe head injury, they might have damaged the area around their eye, meaning the eye opening itself is compromised by a physical cause. Okay, so you've got to think about that. Or let's say a patient has suffered um, a, an injury in the left hemisphere, which has affected Broca's area. This could spuriously affect their verbal response, but their conscious level might be normal. So you've always got to think about that when assessing the GCS. So that's, that's all I'm saying about this, and of course you're going to need to look at other sources to get the practicalities of how you assess it.